Hello designers, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a surreal photo manipulation using the layer masking technique and some non-destructive adjustments. We're going to start by going to create new. We're going to select the print preset. And we're going to select tabloid under our blank document presets. Now, by default, the tabloid preset is set to a vertical or portrait mode, but I'm going to select the horizontal or landscape mode for this project, and you'll see that it will have inverted the dimensions so that now the width is longer than the height. And I'm going to click, actually before I click create, I'm going to name it Surreal, and then click create. I have several images that I want to use for this project, so I'm going to start opening them one by one. So I'm going to go to File and Open. And for my background, I am going to be using an image of a galaxy. And I'm going to blend it in using this image of the trees. So I'm going to bring this image of the galaxy over by going to Window, Arrange, and Tile Vertically. And I'm going to use the move tool to click on the picture of the galaxy and drag it over to my tabloid size canvas. Now that I brought it over and I can see it's been stacked on top, I can get rid of the galaxy. So I don't need it anymore. Now I'm going to go and select my picture of the tree and drag it over. I can see the tree is a lot smaller, so I'm going to have to resize it. I'm going to close out the original picture of the tree because I no longer need it. Then in my layers panel for my tabloid size canvas, I'm going to rename these layers. So this bottom layer I'm going to call Galaxy. This top layer I'm going to call Tree. And I always advise you guys to name your layers so that they're easier to locate and to edit. I'm going to resize my tree by going to Edit and Free Transform. I'm going to drag on the corners so that I can resize it. Ordinarily, I would be worrying about some of the pixelation that I'm seeing because the image of the tree was a lot smaller than I expected, but I'm going to be using several layer masking techniques so that I can make a blend between the galaxy layer and the trees. So I think I'll be able to mask any possible um, pixelation here. So here's what I mean. I know that I want to mask the tree. So with the tree layer selected, I'm going to go down to the bottom of my layers panel and select my layer mask icon that looks like this. It looks like a rectangle with a circle in it. And you'll see it will have created the mask thumbnail in the layers panel, but it's empty. So now I have to fill that thumbnail. I'll teach you in class how to mask in two different ways. So using gradients and using our brush tool. Because I want to create a very subtle blend between these two layers, what I'm going to do is actually use my gradient tool to mask the tree into the galaxy and make it look like they're one image. So I'll click on that thumbnail for the mask. Then I'm going to select my gradient tool. And in the gradient picker in the, th in the options bar, I'm going to go to my basic gradients and I'm going to select a black and white gradient. Remember that to use the layer masking technique, you guys will need to use black and white. Black will mask out and white will mask in. So with my linear gradient selected, I'm going to click and drag so that gradually you'll see that the black in the gradient will start masking out the trunk of the tree and leave pretty much just the branches and the leaves. And you'll see that gradually it'll start blending with the galaxy layer underneath it. I want it to be a more dramatic mask, so I'm going to try again. Maybe drag my gradient a little more, and you'll see gradually how it starts blending out. 
Okay, so you can see that the layer mask thumbnail is now showing me the gradient that I applied on this layer so that I could blend out the tree with the galaxy. And you can see I did a fairly good job selecting it because you don't see any edges between the tree image and the galaxy image. It's just very blended out. If I was going to nitpick, I guess I could like zoom in on the bottom of the image and see some edges, but they're very, very minor. So I'm happy with how that looks. I'm going to click Control Save. I'm sorry, File Save and save my progress thus far before I continue working on the other images that I am going to bring into this surreal manipulation. Okay, now I'm going to start populating this surreal landscape with some animals and plant life. I'm going to go to File and Open. And I have several different images that I would like to use. I think I'm going to start with this image of the monkeys. And I'm going to go to Window, Range, and Tile Vertically to split my screen and then I'm going to click on the monkey image and drag it over. You can see the monkey image is fairly small so I'm going to use free transform to resize it. Don't be afraid to make big animals, big plant life, use big images in your surreal manipulation. So you can see that the monkeys are very hairy and this is one reason why the masking technique is so, so important because it will let you to select the items that you need while respecting the texture of those items. So I want to respect the texture of the monkeys and how hairy they are. If I were to use a selection tool such as lasso, quick selection, I wouldn't be able to do them justice. So instead, with the monkeys now resized, I'm going to click on the layer mask th icon at the bottom of my layers panel and you'll see it help. It will have created a blank mask. Now I'm going to use my brush tool and if you have your la your tools rather in a column like this, the brush tool is going to be tool number nine. And with the brush tool selected, I'm going to make sure black is my foreground color, so the top color in my swatches. And in the options bar, I'm going to click on the general brushes, select the soft round brush, and increase the size of my brush, and gradually start masking out the background surrounding the monkeys, so that the monkeys look like they were just chilling in this galaxy tree environment that I was creating. You can see I'm working with a fairly large brush size, which I suggest because it's going to help you guys to blend out the images better, but there's certain things that are going to get lost because the brush is so big. So when I want to go and correct those details, I'll just make my brush significantly smaller so I can get in and focus on the details in the image. I want to avoid using a hard round brush like this because then you're going to create these very sharp lines and that's not what we're going for. And I also want to avoid clicking on anything other than the mask that I need to be working on. So for example, some students will click on the thumbnail for the layer itself. So here I just clicked on the thumbnail for the monkey's image. And if I do that, I'll just basically start painting the image in black, which I don't want to do. So I want to make sure that I'm always in that mask itself so that whenever I use black and white, I'll be actually masking the image in and out and not painting over the image. I can see I got rid of some of the details surrounding the monkey. So if I had made a bigger mistake, for example, and got in their faces, I would switch over to white as my foreground color. The foreground is always the one that's stacked on top. And using white, I'm going to mask in those details in the image that I lost by mistake. So remember, you use black to mask out and white to mask the image in. 
Alright, so that looks pretty decent. I think I'm done with these monkeys. Now I'm going to start adding in a little bit more plant life. So I'm going to go and use um, two other images that I downloaded. I'm going to start with this image of the flower. And I'm going to split my screen and drag the flower over. Now, in order to make my life easier, I could make a selection of the flower first and then mask it. So what I'm going to do is use my good old quick selection tool and click select subject so that Photoshop will make the work easier for me. And I can see it did a fairly good job, but it does need to add a little bit of the stem. I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. With this active selection, I'm going to click the layer mask icon at the bottom of my layers panel and you'll see it will have masked in the flower. It is missing some of the stems so I can use my brush tool and black as my color so I can bring in that stem by masking it in. I'm sorry, white is my color to mask the stem back in and kind of fix some of those areas that Photoshop didn't select the first time. Okay, I think I'm going to bring in one more image just so I can make this even more surreal. Okay, so you guys can see I brought in this picture of the turtle. So again, I'm going to make my life a little bit easier using the quick selection tool to help me select the turtle and then I'm going to mask it. It just helps you to eliminate some of the areas in the background that you don't necessarily want to keep. So it did a fairly good job selecting that turtle, so I'm going to click the mask icon at the bottom of my layers panel. And here is the turtle. So I got all kinds of craziness going on in this photo manipulations thus far. I'm going to make it a little bit crazier, I think, by duplicating this flower layer and bringing the duplicate over and flipping it. So I can have a flower on this side as well. Okay, that looks interesting to me so far. Now you can see that all these images that I have used in the Surreal Manipulation so far have all kinds of different colors and different shadows. One image was obviously underwater, which is the turtle, and then this image of the monkeys was very well lit. So what I want to do is try to unify some of the lights that are being used in the image. To do so, I'm going to go to the bottom of my layers panel and I'm going to select the photo filter adjustment and with the photo filter adjustment I'm going to click under filters and select either a warming filter, cooling filter or one of these different filters that I have available. So I'm going to actually select a filter called sepia and increase the density of that filter and you guys will see that it'll start making the image look warmer kind of like an old photograph. I'm actually going to increase the density to about 100%. In my layers panel, you guys will see that filter is now being uh, represented as its own layer. You can do the same thing with any other adjustment layer. So if I go down to the bottom of my layers panel and select the new adjustment layer icon, and I selected, for example, the black and white adjustment, Okay, so here I applied the black and white adjustment, which does basically a similar thing in trying to unify some of the colors and unify some of the lights that are being used in the image. But if I was using the, the black and white adjustment instead of the filter filter adjustment, I'll see that I have a mask automatically applied to the image. So what I'm going to do is making sure that mask is selected in the layers panel. I'm going to use my gradient tool and from the bottom down, I'm going to click and drag so that gradually I'll start uh, I'll start showing off some of the color in the monkeys some of the color in the background and gradually some of the color in the flowers if you don't like it the first time you do it you can always just drag the gradient again until you can get a more interesting blend I think that looks really good so just to summarize I used a little bit of the gradient tool to mask out the tree in the background. I used the brush and selection tools to help me mask out the images of the flowers, the monkey, and uh, the other animal, the turtle. 
And then I used two adjustment layers. I used the photo filter adjustment, which helped me to kind of create this very warm overall light in the image. And then, gra and then lastly, I used a black and white adjustment to make the image black and white. And then I masked that black and white adjustment so I could get this really interesting blend of colors. So I'm happy with how this image looks so far. I think I'm going to go and finish it off with a brightness and contrast adjustment by going to the bottom of my layers panel, selecting the new fill and adjustment layer icon, selecting brightness and contrast, and you know, you have a little button that says auto when you guys select one of the adjustments. And Photoshop basically just tries to um, adjust the contrast and brightness automatically for you. I'm actually going to lower the contrast just a little bit because I feel like it's a little bit too high. But basically, I feel like I am done. So, since I'm done, I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'm going to select Export As. And from the Export menu, I'm going to select JPEG as my final format. I'm going to click export and that my friends is what I'm going to be submitting to canvas today. So I hope that's been helpful to you guys. You guys know how to find me if you have any questions. Peace out.